Trump has now arrived back in Washington. He'll be meeting with Senate Republicans Tuesday. He just tweeted that this is a big week coming up for tax cuts. Well, I do believe in prayer, number one, and I hope that we get it done by Christmas. Conyers announced he was stepping down as the top Democrat on the powerful House Judiciary Committee. John Conyers is an icon in our country. He will do the right thing. I'm someone who hugs people. I've learned so I've crossed the line for some Women. Fox News alert, law enforcement across the country on high alert this holiday season as terrorists look to target U.S. trains. Prince Harry officially off the market after months of speculation. The royal family announcing Harry is engaged to the Suits actress uh, and an American, Meghan Markle. For roughly two dozen players choosing to sit, kneel, or raise a fist during the national anthem on Sunday. We have a fight on the other side. Look at this. Helmets being thrown. Talib grabbed it off. Referee is down and look at holding on to his ribs. Boswell's kick is good to win the game. Show business. Michael was he Bublé? Bublé? Was he Bubble? You think? No, <laughs> I believe it was Bublé. Do you, do you think it was always been Bublé, or does he just change it? There's not a. It's not a double B. Right. Actually, so it's B U B. So there are two Bs, but in Bubble there are three Bs. So right. Brian, at some point in your life, you thought his name was Michael Bubbles. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go show business, Mom. I gotta change my name because Bublé rolls off the know, tongue as opposed are to Bubble. Are you Bubble. Hold on. Hold on. Hey Siri. Is Michael Bublé's real name Michael Bublé? Asks a judge to decide blocking Mulvaney's appointment. This all started when Obama's director, Richard Cordray, resigned Friday, tapping his deputy, English, on the way out the door as President Trump sought to reform an agency that he believes has become too political. The president tweeting over the weekend, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or CFPB, has been a total disaster as run by the previous administration's pick. He went on to vow to bring the agency back to life, but Democrats view it differently. Here's Here's Dick Durbin. It's a watchdog agency. Wall Street hates it like the devil hates holy water, <laughs> and they're trying to put an end to it with Mr. Cord uh, with Mr. Mulvaney stepping into Cordray's spot. Now, the CFPB is the brainchild of Elizabeth Warren before she was a senator, and it was enacted under Dodd-Frank in response to the financial collapse. Here's what then-Congressman Mick Mulvaney said about it in 2014. The place is just, it's, it's a wonderful example of how a bureaucracy will function if it has no accountability to anybody. Um, it turns up being a joke, and that's what the CFPB really has been in a, in a, in a, in a sick, sad kind of way. Now, English argues in her lawsuit that wording in Dodd-Frank supports her claim, but the administration argues that the Federal Vacancies Reform Act gives the president the authority to name Mulvaney or anyone else he chooses as acting director. Should English actually prevail, it only delays the president from naming a permanent uh, director who would then require Senate confirmation. It's worth noting Obama's director, Cordray, had to be appointed in recess. He could not get confirmation. That's right. Yes. All right, Griff, thank you very much. So it all comes down to who gets to pick. You would think the president of the United States would be able to, if he appoints yeah, someone to a federal this, organization, yeah, they would get the job. By the way, Michael Bublé, who is Canadian, yes. is of uh, Canadian and Italian extraction, and Bublé is his real name. He's 45 years old and, no, sorry, he is 42 and he makes $45 million a year. Wow, oh a year? Is he really yeah. happy? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Wait, how do you pronounce it? Michael Stephen Bublé. But how do you spell it? Go Bublé. Oh, it's Bublé. It's no. not Bublé. Right. So that's <laughs> right. how you put the consonants in. Meanwhile, <laughs> this is going to be a big week because the President of the United States wants the Senate to do what the House did, and that is take up and pass uh, their version of tax reform. And for them to do that, this is going to be a big week because they only have a handful of days left before they're done, uh, have to go on Christmas vacation. They also have to fund the government, which gets unfunded as of December 8th. Yeah, this morning, if you're waking up, Thanksgiving is over. The president's tweeting this, back in D.C., big week for tax cuts and many other things of great importance to our country. Senate Republicans 
will hopefully come through for all of us. The tax cut bill is getting better and better. The end result will be great for all. Sure. Well, the president is going to have lunch today with the vice president and members of the Senate Finance uh, Committee. And then tomorrow he's going to meet with the big four leaders of the House and the Congress. One member of the U.S. Senate is Senator Tim Scott. And he says that if tax reform uh, is passed by this Congress, it's going to have a direct impact on not just the middle class, but on lower class. Listen to this. If you don't pay income taxes and we increase your refund by 40%, that is a direct dollar impact. In other words, you'll have more money to use to keep those ends together, those single mothers like mine who are working paycheck to paycheck. What we focused on is making sure that those folks who are str struggling to get ahead in life have more of their own money so that they can take care of the needs of their families and perhaps even have a night out. Right. Uh, they tried to get Senator Tim Scott to say he had problems with it, but he wouldn't. Uh, he also, uh, did, it is pointed out that among the six that aren't uh, a yes yet that we know of, Senator Susan Collins, but seems to be working that way. Senator Bob Corker also trying to work towards a yes. Senator Jeff Flake also is in agreement. He says that Congress came up with most of this themselves before President Trump was even elected. Senator Murkowski also getting close to saying yes, I believe. The only person I have not heard about, either way, maybe you guys have, is Senator McCain. What about Rand Paul? Right. Uh, Rand you Paul. said six. Those are five. Right, Who's the yeah. six? Is so maybe wait, one, two, three, four, five. You're right. It would be uh, Rand Paul is the other person we have not heard from. So stay tuned. In the meantime, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, with the Christmas holiday season officially underway, it turns out there have been a number of uh, those from Hollywood, Brian uh, was talking about earlier, right. who've kind of freaked out. Uh, first up, let's talk a little bit about uh, Deborah Messing. You know her. She's been an actress for a long time on Will and Grace and things like that. She really reacted to the fact that the New York Times tweeted this out yesterday. Ben Shapiro is a hero to millennial conservatives looking for an alternative to Trump and Trumpism. They had a great profile about Ben Shapiro, who's certainly been in the news, and it turns out she didn't like the fact that the New York Times had uh, published anything about that guy. So she wrote, and why I canceled my subscription to at New York Times. Yeah, so she, that was it, because they said nice things about Ben Shapiro. Actually, they didn't really say nice things. They, they just did the facts. Well, that yeah. he represents a new generation of Republicans, extremely popular podcast, mm -hmm. and extremely, uh, con, you know, extremely marketable speaker who gets a lot of protests with his appearances. That was it. It wasn't, a, I love Ben Shapiro. So you can't even do a profile for her. <laughs> so then, you know, uh, Susan Sarandon, she uh, did not like Hillary Clinton last time around. She was a big Bernie supporter. She said the DNC and the convention were corrupt. And now she has taken to Guardian to try to blow up Hillary Clinton a little more. She said, I did think that she was very, very dangerous. We would still be fracking. We would be at war if she were president. It wouldn't be much smoother. Look what happened under Obama that we didn't notice. Right. So it says Susan Sarandon, who is uh, in Bull Durham. It was very good. Yeah, she said yeah. that. She said the DNC was uh, completely corrupt. And so she, even though Hillary Clinton is now a uh, former candidate, still not a fan of uh, Mrs. Clinton. Right, and that she represents, too, the divide on the Democratic side because uh, you got to go more to the left to get Susan Sarandon happy. Uh, so good luck. Way to the left. Yeah, so if you're a moderate, you're not going to make Susan Sarandon happy. If you're, not way, to the, if you're way to the left, you're going to keep uh, two-thirds of the Democrats from being happy. So good luck, everybody. But who are the moderate Democrats? Maybe Governor Hickenlooper stands out as somebody. Okay. Stands out? Right. He does. <laughs> Colorado. So it's a right. And he might be running for president. All right. Let's hand it over to Jillian, who has some headlines for us. Good morning. Good morning. And some breaking royal news that we're following this Duh. morning, guys. So let's get you caught up, starting with this Fox News alert. Prince Harry is officially off the market. After months of speculation, the royal family announcing Harry is engaged to Suits actress and American Meghan Markle. Prince Harry defining his place in the royal family back in 2013 while serving as an ambulance pilot for the British Army when he heroically cut an interview short after hearing sirens in the background. It wasn't done in the wrong way, but it was just... Prince Harry and Meghan have been dating for 17 months. The wedding set to take place in the spring of 2018. 33-year-old Prince Harry is fifth in line for the throne. Congrats. I know. It's great. All right. We do have some more breaking news right now, though. A massive volcano on the brink of erupting. Indonesian officials raising the alert to the highest level, 
ordering the evacuation of 100,000 people from the popular tourist island of Bali. Rising ash from Mount Ugang shutting down the airport and stranding 60,000 tourists. The volcano last erupted in 1963, killing more than 1,000 people. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi coming to John Conyers' defense. The California Democrat even putting Conyers on a pedestal as he stepped down from the House Judiciary Committee over sexual misconduct allegations. We are strengthened by due process. Just because someone is accused, you, and, and was it one accusation, is it two? I think there has to be. John Conyers is an icon in our country. He has done a, gr a great deal to protect women. And the congressman who is under investigation by the Ethics Committee is accused of using taxpayer dollars to settle sexual misconduct lawsuits. Meantime, Conyers' Democratic colleague, Senator Al Franken, says he will be back at work this morning and will not resign over the allegations against him. Franken, who is accused of groping several women, calls himself a, quote, champion and ally of women. Take a look at this. Firefighters go above and beyond the call after a man falls off a ladder hanging Christmas lights. As paramedics rush the Colorado homeowner to the hospital, some firefighters stayed back and finished decorating the house. The man broke his leg and would not have been able to do it himself. Gotta love when you hear stories like that. Isn't that great? That you gotta be great. careful on those big ladders. Do. Duh, oh boy. But he came <laughs> home to a decorated house. I know. Very nice. Thanks, That's Jay. why there are businesses now that make a lot of money doing Decorating. the lights for you. You're right. Right, and they'll stick their sign right in your front yard. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, a chilling new terror threat targeting our trains. We are live at the busiest rail station in the country with details on that. Great. Next. And, and cue the music. It's the question that has everyone asking, has it really been 20 years? Hmm? I'll never let go. I got news for you, he dies. Why didn't Rose make room for Jack and the Titanic? <laughs> on the door. Right. Why, the why was door. he allowed on the boat? We can finally have the answer. It's and, art. By the way, it was a movie. He didn't really exist. All right, we are back with the Fox News Alert now. Law enforcement stepping up security as terrorists target, um, by, by, it looks like terrorists are targeting American trains. That's pretty scary. The TSA is warning about attacks similar to the foiled plot to derail a New York bound train in 2012. Todd Pyro is live at one of the busiest train stations in the world, Penn Station, here in New York City. Todd? Steve Ainsley and Brian, good morning, Steve. You said it best. This is one of the busiest train stations in the country on a normal day. And you can just imagine, as we approach the Christmas season with so many people coming into the city to see all that New York City has to offer, it's going to grow even more busy. And this latest report comes in after the latest issue of an Al-Qaeda publication that gave instructions for derailing a train, calling our railroads some of our easiest targets. Now, this article prompted the TSA to send a security notice to law enforcement across the nation. But experts say that securing our rails is a tall task. One, because of the sheer number of tracks, about 140,000 miles of rail lines across our land. But two, because as you saw here in Penn Station, rail stations are open to the public. You'll recall that in a journal recovered by SEAL teams during the operation that killed Osama bin Laden, there was an outline of a plot against our rail system. In 2009, the FBI arrested a 20 25-year-old Afghani national living in Colorado for conspiring to bomb the New York City subway system. And in 2012, an undercover U.S. agent foiled a plot to derail a New York-bound passenger train. Well, I think there's always room for improvement. I think the most important thing for us to do in the short term is to stay on offense in the Middle East, because the longer we allow groups like ISIS to gain and maintain territory, yep. the longer they grow in the hearts and minds of disaffected young Muslims around the world. So we cannot let off on that pressure. Targeting the rails is nothing new. Terrorists have killed hundreds over the years in Europe. Now the question becomes, can we prevent it here in the U.S.? Steve Ainsley, Brian, back to you. Let's hope so. All right. Todd Pyro down at Penn Station. We thank you very much. In the uh, English language version of the Al-Qaeda magazine, they showed you how to make a homemade derailment tool at your own house to go wow. put on the tracks where there's no security. It could be terrible. I'm on the railroad every single day. Let me tell you something. No one's checking backpacks. Nobody's. You can't. It's not possible. Well, I don't know. There's 140,000 miles of track. 
that for the most part. Do you part think about it when you get on the train? Correct. Never. Just keep it that way then, <laughs> right? I'm not thinking about it. Thankfully, the experts are worried about it. Meanwhile, straight ahead on this Monday, an unusual sight sparking big security concerns for football fans. What was a drone doing above two stadiums yesterday? We and, think we know. Okay, and you know the government spent thousands of your taxpayer dollars to study that right there. The oh, shrimp yeah. on the treadmill. Why do I think he's kind of cute? But did Don't you know go. that they paid 30 grand to put on a production of Doggy Hamlet? Senator James Langford's government waste report coming up next. We have some quick headlines for you. Caught on camera, a police officer gets out of the way of a speeding car at the last possible second. Whoa. Wow. The officer had to roll out of the way on that New Jersey highway. He was on the side of the road investigating an accident. Thankfully, he was not hurt. And a pickup truck crashes into a gym in broad daylight. Wow, the driver losing consciousness as he barrels through that wall. The Los Angeles gym would typically be filled with people at the time of the crash, but a class had just walked out. No one was seriously injured. Brian. All right. Uh, thanks, Ainsley. 24 minutes after the hour. President Trump back in the White House and ready to talk tax reform with senators tweeting this back in D.C. Big week for tax cuts and many other things of great importance to our country. Senate Republicans will hopefully come through for all of us. The tax cut bill is getting better and better, and the end result will be great for all. One of the senators meeting with the president this week is Oklahoma Republican uh, Senator James Langford. Senator, welcome back. Glad to be back with you, Brian. Senator, I know the, the House passed and you guys got your version through committee. As early as Thursday, there'll be an overall vote. If the vote was today, would Senator Langford be a yes? Yeah, we're still working through all the final aspects of it, Brian, but I can't imagine we're not going to support this at the end uh, as a whole and as the Senate. I'm still working on some specific parts of it, uh, what I call a debt backstop to be able to make sure that that's in place and other aspects of it. Uh, but this will get done. We have got to get this done for the nation. You know, the, the whole thing is I've heard you, Senator Corker, Senator Flake, uh, and Senator Mikowski say they want to get, and even Senator Collins said they want to get to a yes. I have not heard that from Rand Paul and John McCain. What can you tell us on that? Actually, you have to talk to uh, Rand and John about that. I don't know where they are on that, uh, but I would tell you that as we've gone through the process, everybody, and uh, includes everybody, is trying to figure out a way to be able to actually make this the best possible document. This affects everybody in America, so it should be right. It's not something that should be rushed, but it should be done. Uh, so we'll hopefully be able to get that through. So your biggest uh, obstacle for you right now, uh, Senator Langford, is? Is, is the actual dead backstop. I want to make sure that we have a built-in process to be able to, uh, if the numbers don't come in correctly, to make sure that we do actually provide a way to be able to guard us against debt and deficit. Uh, that's currently not in there. There's a lot of conversation about how it would work. Uh, we're trying to be able to get that in there and to get the language right. I imagine it's going to come somehow down to spending at some point, uh, and that might be for a different day. So you believe it will pass before Christmas? I do, actually, and I think it should. And there'll be a vote Thursday? Uh, we'll see if there's a vote Thursday. They're trying to work with the parliamentarian right now to be able to work out exact language. Uh, that sometimes takes an extra day to be able to work that through. So Thursday, Friday, at worst case scenario, pushes over to early next week. But that's not delaying the process. Uh, that's just part of the process. All right, let's talk spending now. You know, every year there's an annual uh, government waste list out. And some things that really stood out for you that you're putting out today that you want everyone's attention on where we could save money. For example, Doggy Hamlet, can we take a look at this? And how much did it cost us? This is $30,000 uh, worth of NEA grants. Uh, it's a production in New Hampshire. Again, I have no problem with them performing Doggy Hamlet in New Hampshire, but I don't understand why the people of Connecticut are forced to their federal tax dollars to pay for the production uh, that's in New Hampshire. I certainly don't want the people of Oklahoma uh, to be able to pay for that. Uh, this is $30,000. It's a small example. We have examples like that. We go all the way up to $458 billion in what's called the tax gap uh, with the IRS. And so we've got Every variety from very small to very, very large areas of waste and areas where the federal government just dropped the ball, didn't complete their job. Also, something that, uh, that really aggravates you is the IRS rehired over a thousand people they fired for their bad conduct uh, since 2010. What is that about? 
Yeah, these are individuals that were not only uh, fired because they were mishandling information. There's some famous examples of all that. Uh, but there's also uh, examples of individuals working for the IRS that don't actually pay their federal taxes. So they had been fired. Then the IRS turns around and rehires them. This was an issue that we brought up several years ago. They said they cleaned it up just as recently as this year. Again, we found another 200 employees that the IRS had fired that then turned around and rehired again. And uh, so, uh, again, that we, we shouldn't have to do that. That's just a fumble. Right. It's a fumble, but there's lack of oversight, so you notice it. I'm wondering if you can go back and fix it. Next, the Defense Department can't track a billion dollars of equipment in Iraq. In a time in which the defense is being squeezed, man, I'd love to find that billion dollars worth of equipment. How do you go about that? How does that happen? So these are Humvees, these are small arms, these are mortars, these are areas, these are products that we were giving to the Iraqi military for them to be able to defend their own country. They were transferred into Kuwait to be able to transfer the Iraqi military. We know they got to Kuwait. We don't know what happened from there. A billion dollars worth of equipment. We hope it got into the right hands, but DOD didn't actually track it. They don't actually know. Senator Langford, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving, and now it's going to be a sprint to Christmas, and hopefully you'll be able to get a lot done uh, before you're done. Senator, thanks so much. You bet. Thanks, guys. All right. Meanwhile, 31 minutes before the top of the hour, still ahead. Activists targeting the family of the FCC chairman, calling him a murderer of democracy because of his plans for the Internet. We're going to check in with the chairman. He'll react live. And should a deal for Dreamers be part of the budget? Talk, talking DACA. Steve Cortez says maybe, but it's going to take more than just that. He's next. Big Town in New York City. It's Fox and Friends for this very busy Monday. And look who's here on the couch. We've got Steve Cortez, Fox News contributor, former Trump Hispanic advisory council member, and he's going to be on Outnumbered today. Good morning. Yes, Wonderful. busy day here at Fox. Good to have you all on the Kirby yes. couch. Thank so you. Republicans have to fund the government by December 8th. The Democrats are saying, we'll support your spending bill if you give us DACA. What right. are your thoughts? Well, you know, Ainsley, here's the thing. I'm actually in favor of extending DACA, and I disagree with some of my colleagues on Team Trump uh, who want DACA rescinded. Uh, I want it done the right way, not the way President Obama did it, where he waved his, his scepter like a king and did it by executive order. It needs to go through the Congress. Uh, but I do believe that the DACA people, uh, and, and the left often calls them children. They're not children now, they're adults, but these adults were brought here as children. Uh, and I believe they comprise, because they didn't choose to willfully break our immigration laws, I do they believe they comprise a different group of people that should be treated differently than other illegal immigrants. That said, uh, I don't want it part of the spending bill. I think it needs to be part of a broader immigration bill. And I believe that the president right. needs and deserves to get something in return. But He's shown great compassion to DACA. He should get an end to chain migration, and he should get more resources for the border for building that wall. Well, we didn't get a repeal and replace, and we did, we're, we're having trouble getting tax reform. Let's say we get it. What makes you think that he didn't even bring up immigration reform? He right. brought up welfare reform, and he brought up uh, infrastructure. So to think to squeeze in a mass of immigration reform, Steve, it's not practical. No, and that could be, Brian. And, and perhaps for that reason, maybe extended another six months or right, something like that. I, I think the president showed great compassion. Many people within the White House were arguing uh, against even this six-month extension that he granted. Uh, and I listen, the, the Congress has been obstructionist from the get-go. And I'm talking about Republicans, by the way, sure. in the Congress to the president's agenda. Uh, so I agree with you. I'm not confident necessarily that they can get this done in time. But regardless, they should. Sure. Um, and, and look, America needs several things. An end to sanctuary cities. We need control of our southern border. The president's already largely done that. God bless him. And he gets no credit for it that illegal crossings have plunged. That's a great thing, but it has to go to zero. We need the wall. We need an end to sanctuary cities. And in my opinion, we need to show compassion to these DACA people uh, and allow them status. But, but you know, uh, one of the things when the president brings up uh, you know, he's going to end welfare, as uh, Bill Clinton knows it, and the other things. That's just a negotiating thing. Right. That's what all this stuff is. Because the Congress is unable to do a lot of stuff. He's just doing stuff by saying, okay, we've got to do this, this, and this, and then glom it in together with something else. Right. No, and Steve, I think that's part of the point here. And that, that's what's so wonderful about having the first entrepreneur ever as president of the United States, uh, a literal builder of buildings, someone who knows how to get projects done, uh, this project being the biggest of his life, of, of saving the United States, of resurrecting this country and restoring the Constitution and economic growth. Great 
things are happening. Here's, here's the thing I think that out there uh, in flyover country where I'm from in the Midwest, uh, the economy's humming. Sales were fantastic over the weekend. Because uh, of Christmas the shopping. he's reducing the number of regulations. Right. Regulation is down. That, that burden has been relieved largely. I think tax cuts are coming. I hope tax cuts are coming. So great things are happening. You wouldn't know it if you watch mainstream media. You wouldn't know it if you only listen to uh, people on Capitol Hill, including the Republicans. Uh, but there, there is a, a pulse again in this country. Uh, there's an optimism that's palpable and it's, it's happening. And part of that, by the way, is going to be immigration reform. We have to get control. We love immigration, by the way. Yeah. We're often painted as being anti-immigrant. Nothing can be further from the truth. I'm the son of an immigrant. So is Donald Trump. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, married to an immigrant. We love legal immigration. It's a fabric of, of our American society. It's illegal. Illegal problem. immigration, though, is a scourge upon American society, and it has to be controlled. Right, and we don't want the criminals here because look at Kate Steinle. Kate Steinle's jury is deliberating this week. We could find out um, what they decide in the next right. few days. A simple reminder of why we why these sanctuary cities might not be a good thing, in your right. opinion, right? You you think that they need to we need to end sanctuary oh, cities? Oh, absolutely. They needed to end yesterday, sanctuary cities. And Kate Steinle, look, you know, Ainsley, sometimes in, in life, tragedies happen and they're not preventable. This was totally preventable. Uh, her assailant, her murderer, was was in San Francisco police custody weeks before he murdered her. But they, they the released police, him yeah. into the public despite the fact That's that there was an ICE question, detainer for, for, for federal custody so that he could de be deported for the sixth Time. Right, but here's the thing: uh, with the shooter by accident, or shooter on purpose. That's what they're going to get down to. Right, and intent. And, and right, and listen, I'm not a lawyer. That is a difficult question for the jury uh, to grapple well, with. They Regardless, yeah. he took a loaded gun into an incredibly crowded space and he fired it. Okay, it's a so, stolen gun, by the way. Right, so he's he's guilty of something terrible, right. well, whether look, it's murder or manslaughter. I'll leave that to the to the jury to right. the lawyers. Point well, is, the, he shouldn't have been here in the first place. Should have been. He should have been in ICE custody and deported. Well, the Absolutely. jury. Do you know this? Will the jury have information on his past? Will they be able to? Do, have they been? told that he was I don't deported know. five times? It is in the middle of a sanctuary county, so who knows. Right. Meanwhile, let's talk a little bit about this. Yesterday, a lot of people historically watch football, but right. if you looked at the stands in week 12, uh, a number of the arenas were, you know, had a lot of empty seats, plus two dozen players protested right. once again. Where is this going? You know, Steve, I, I love the game of football. It's hard for me to exaggerate what a big part it's been of my life. I played football from youth all the way through college football. I've coached it forever. Who's your play? High school football. I played for Georgetown. Uh, Georgetown Hoys. Uh, which was a ton of fun. So football is a massive part of my life. I'm a huge fan of the game. Uh, for the first Thanksgiving since I was a toddler, I didn't watch one minute of pro football. I will not watch this disrespectful NFL. Uh, and on top of it, not only are they disrespectful and unpatriotic, on top of it, I wrote an article about this for the Fox News website. We as taxpayers subsidize the NFL to the tune of billions of dollars, stadium mostly via stadium deals, but other ways too, but mostly via stadium construction. So we have to stop subsidizing this this disrespectful, unpatriotic league. It's a bad idea anyway, even before they started doing this, because it's welfare to the top 1% of 1%, to the billionaire owners of the league, to the very highly paid players and coaches. So it shouldn't have happened in the first place, but particularly now uh, that they're really putting their finger in our eye uh, as patriotic Americans. Uh, you know, but here's the, the nice thing about it, Steve, I guess, or it's not nice, but the, the good outcome, if there is one, is that uh, the ratings are going down. Um, so they are suffering in their pocketbook right now uh, for, for this bad behavior. Yeah, attendance and ratings are down about 10% across the board. Some right. say it's because of uh, bad games. I well, have a feeling uh, the ratings are going to be great today on Outnumbered. At noon, you'll be the host <laughs> along with the uh, other ladies. Enjoy it. It's Thank a fun you. show. Thank Thanks, Steve. Thank you, Steven. All right, let's hand it over to Jill. You know I have some headlines for us. Good morning. Good She's morning right to Steve. you guys. To you at home as well. Happy Monday. Let's get you caught up on your headlines of the day. A suspected road rage shooter is now behind bars. 33-year-old Kwanzaa Donald is accused of firing over a dozen rounds from the window of his car while driving on the Florida Turnpike, injuring two people. Donald tells police he thought he he was shooting at people who followed him from his home state of Texas, and he thought they were trying to kill him. He's charged with attempted murder. Well, drones are sparking brand new security concerns for football stadiums. A man now under arrest accused of flying the high air, the aircraft over Levi Stadium in San Francisco and the Oakland Coliseum. The drone dropping these anti-media leaflets over crowds watching NFL games. An investigation by federal, state, and local law enforcement, including the FBI, is currently underway. All right, two decades after the film's release, the director of Titanic is finally revealing why Jack had to die. I'll never let go. I promise. 
promise. In case you spent all these years wondering, here's the deal. James Cameron telling Vanity Fair that Leonardo DiCaprio's character Jack died simply because that's what was in the script, calling it an artistic choice. Co-star